All right guys, on today's video, we're gonna give you some practice tips for uh, choosing your hunting arrows. And I don't mean choosing your hunting arrows as in going to the store and buying a particular arrow. We've already went through all that. It's getting closer to September right now, so most of you have probably already bought whatever you're gonna be hunting with for this fall. But once I get my arrows in, what I like to do is go through a process and find the best arrows out of that batch. Whenever you order a dozen arrows, for example, seven, eight, nine of them are gonna fly well, but there's always gonna be a few flyers out of that dozen. At least that's been my experience. And that goes with just about any brand across the entire spectrum of arrows. So I got my Sirius Apollos here. I've got, I don't know, probably 15 or 16 different arrows. And I'm gonna just walk you guys through my process for choosing my hunting arrows. As you can tell here, on this first arrow, I'm gonna be shooting broadheads on all these. On this first arrow, I've got a one marked right here. And you can see I've got my lighted knocks in there already. I've already knock tuned this particular arrow. And then I've got a broadhead on there. This is the same type of broadhead that I'm gonna be shooting, but it's obviously dull because it's the one I'm shooting into a target. So I'm gonna unscrew this one and put a sharp one on before I go hunting. This arrow, I've already decided is gonna be my number one hunting arrow because I've been shooting it all summer. But now I need to go through the rest of them and determine which ones fly really well out of my bow and which ones are kind of wonky. Those all just push to the side and reserve for practice arrows. But the rest I'm gonna, I'm gonna take hunting with me. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this arrow so you guys can see in slow motion how it's flying out of my bow. I think it's real important to shoot these things with the lighted knocks that you're gonna hunt with and the broadheads. You ready, Curl? All right, now I'm gonna go back to that camera and see how the arrow came off of my bow. You can also do this with a cell phone. You don't have to have these fancy cameras out here like what we have, in fact, most of the cell phones nowadays have really good cameras. Just go with a buddy out to the archery range and get over their shoulder with the phone and film them in slow motion with the phone. And you can see the arrows, how they come off the riser and then how they go down range. And if they're flying good with these things on there, then you're good to go. You're good to put them in your quiver and use them as hunting arrows. My second arrow. And it's real important that you mark these guys, otherwise you'll get them real confused, or at least I do. That's why I got my Sharpie markers out here. And I haven't knocked tuned this arrow. I've, I've knock tuned the other one and I'll show you what I do for knock tuning here in just a second. I'm gonna put a number two right there on that white fletching. I screwed my broadhead onto it. It's already got a lighted knock in it. I like to shoot the lighted knocks all summer because they weigh more than your traditional knock. So it's actually gonna affect the weight of your arrow slightly, probably not a lot enough to make a huge difference, but I'm just paranoid. I want all my gear to be exactly the same whenever I go hunting. So let's go shoot this second arrow here. See how it behaves. You ready, Curl? Not too, not too bad. All right, that arrow looked like it flew pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the knock. I have my two on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the knock right at the top. See, with these nocturnal knocks, they have this little uh, hole in the bottom of them where you can turn the knock off. And I leave that on the bottom side of my arrow. So I like the way that last one flew. So I'm gonna mark across that knock and onto the arrow shaft. So I know that's the position that I want it to be in. That was with one of my broadheads too. So I have two good arrows now. Right here is arrow number three. I got one of my Magnus heads on this one, but I'm gonna shoot my cutthroat head just to keep everything consistent. I'm gonna keep shooting the same broadhead, trying to keep it as consistent as possible. And see, I'm going through these one at a time and I'm marking that knock. That allows me to know which arrows I've done and which arrows I haven't. You could also make notes on your phone or have your little tablet out here or something like that. Whatever helps you keep the things organized. But this one here, I have not shot very much. Numero Grace. Let's sling number three down range here, boys. See what she looks like. He's gonna film this one on the cell phone too so you guys can see what that looks like coming off the bow. Felt like that one could have been pretty wonky. Let's look at it. Oh yeah, yep. That's what I thought. It comes off the bow tail high immediately and that's what causes it to hit low and right. And I thought this arrow was gonna do that because I was having issues with it the other day. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to get it to behave. And then if we can't get it to behave, we're gonna move on to the next arrow and we're gonna designate this one as a practice arrow. That was perfect curl. I could really see it good that time, so. And here's what I do when I'm not tuning, Benjamin. I'm gonna put it on there in the same spot where I had it before, except I'm gonna turn it this time. I'm just gonna turn it a quarter turn and see if that helps at all. You can really see it when you're, when you're bear shaft tuning. When the fletchings get on there, it's a little bit harder to see, but 
I did a quarter turn on that knock and now I'm gonna shoot it again. You ready, Curl? Yep. Pretty sure it did the same thing. Dove way low and right. Oh yeah, same thing. That one doesn't look quite as bad yeah. as the one before, but this arrow, for whatever reason, both times, it's going tail high, right out of the bow. And you could see some of this stuff with paper if you were wanting to do every single arrow, but this is also an easy way to do it. Just like that phone, you can see it easily coming right out of the bow, especially if you film with your phone and highlight like this. We're gonna give this thing one more try and then we're gonna move on to the next one. I'm gonna turn it again, one more quarter turn. So right now, this is a full half turn. Basically have flipped the arrow upside down and I'm gonna see how it flies off of it this time. See what she does here. That one felt better. And obviously, I mean, if you release it funky or torque your bow arm or whatever, that can have an impact on it. That's why you really gotta spend some time doing this. But now that we're getting inside like that three week to month and a half window before season start opening up, this is the stuff that I like to start working on anyway. Because whenever I go hunting in Wyoming in three weeks, I want there to be five arrows in that quiver that are all shooting like darts with the same broadhead, the same lighted knocks. I don't have to worry about which one I grab. I know that they're all tested in the yard and they're all shooting good. All right, I went down, got the arrow, looked at the slow-mo. That was definitely the best of the three knock positions. And that was completely opposite of where I started at. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. When I look back at that slow motion, it's not quite as good as those other two. The arrow is still wanting to wobble a little bit. It's coming off the bow cleaner and it's stabilizing faster than that tail high stuff that it was doing before. So I'm gonna mark it, but I'm gonna take this arrow and I'm gonna throw it out for now. Be good if I made some notes or something, no, like number three is a borderline arrow. So far I've shot three and this one is in last place. We got it shooting better just by turning that knock a little bit. I like shooting at you know, 20, 25 yards for this and really trying to focus on making a good clean release more than hitting your spot on the target because I want that arrow to come off of there nice and clean without me alternate you know, with my grip or slapping the trigger or anything. I'm gonna go upper right this time. What's it look like, Curl? Let's see it. That was number four. Oh, tail high, bad. Yep, yep, you can really see it. Oh yeah. And it was a pretty clean release, but oh yeah, she went tail high. Let's see if we can fix that. All right, same thing as the last arrow, except I'm just gonna do a quarter turn. What's that one look like, Curl? It might have been a little better. Oh yeah, immediate improvement when I turn that knot. Still might be just a freckle tail high, but it's my, it ain't much. That's pretty dang close. I'm gonna try it, turn it one more time, mm -hmm. see if it gets better. If it gets worse, then we're just gonna nail it there. All right, I just took a third shot with it and I rotated it one more time. See right there's where it was initially. And I basically flipped the arrow all the way over and I like where it was shooting at that last time. The first time I shot it was tail high. The second time it was a little bit better. And that last time it was about the same. It was pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and nail it right there with my Sharpie. It shows that's where my tune is at. So now when I grab four arrow, number four arrow out of the quiver, I know exactly how to knock it onto my bow and exactly where it needs to be in case that gets turned. But you guys can kind of see the process here. My first two arrows that I shot flew really well, but that's because I've already done all this to those two. And then the next one that I shot was pretty wonky and I cast it out. This one was wonky at first, but after I turned it a couple of times, a couple quarter turns with that knock, it came in there and it was flying pretty plumb with the broadhead on, that's what I want. It's about 24 yards or something like that, about how far we've been shooting. That's a good distance, don't shoot too close. You know, it may take eight, 10 yards for the arrow to paradox and stabilize. And you really wanna see what that arrow is doing immediately out of the bow and then about 15, 20 yards down range and as it impacts the target. That's enough for experiments today, guys. Hopefully a few of those tips helped you all out. Get out in the yard and get your arrows tuned up. Start marking on them, knock tuning. Get them ready to go for the season. Hopefully I'll get you a deer. And just like that, thanks for watching. See you guys.